I am an idiot, but also I'm going to flex all over the Diablo 2 list scene. Quite some time ago as my first foray into the underground game Diablo 2, I made a list of the top 10 items I liked and disliked. They were a little haphazardly made, a little rushed, a little thoughtless, you know, but I've decided to apply an absolute chunk of mathematics, statistics, research, and determine the rank of every single unique in Diablo 2. Call Dole because I'm going fucking bananas. And this topic, I want you, the viewer, to know this part, so huddle up, listen up, pay attention, put your focus on me, think about what I'm saying, give me a bit of your time, hush up real quick, okay, good. The Oculus sucks ass. But more importantly, this week we are going completely mental, and I'm making spreadsheets, I'm measuring shit, and I'm giving my best effort at accurately ranking the performance and usefulness of every item in this game. Before we begin, let me elaborate on the system that I used. There are 379 different unique items in the game. I listed them all out in an Excel document, popped open the wikis, and listed out all the stats on a separate document. Then I went down the list, evaluating each item's modifiers, giving each line of text a score from negative 2 to plus 2. Plus 2 is better than minus 2, by the way, we're not playing golf here, so the higher the score, the better the item. I also took into account the benefits at the time the item can be used. For example, a level 5 item has great stats at level 5. It slams mega ass basically, but there's no endgame functionality at all. This doesn't detract from the usefulness of the item though, since it has a great application at some point. Therefore, the item would have a pretty good weighted score. Conversely, you have an item that takes forever to use or to find, and it has a stat which would have been good in the middle of Nightmare, but by the end of Hell difficulty, the item falls off insanely hard, as the somewhat good modifier is now redundant or outdated. Therefore, it receives a much lower score. Also, I'm aware that after everything was said and done, that some items are way lower or way higher than they practically should be. I know some will be in a seemingly wrong placement, but this list is purely ranking power based on their modifiers. I had a lot of criteria. I went into games and used the items, I did my research, went over the top, got all the data I needed, and I know someone is still going to say that I'm a fucking idiot, and that's totally fine, feel free, it's my list, you want to go through the hardcore, unparalleled effort of opening two different windows and clicking and typing buttons? Be my guest, Oculus sucks ass. Also, I'm going Mach Speed Racer 7 with the script, so if you think that the joke writing is a joke, then that's fine, feel free, it's my joke writing, you want to go through the hardcore, unparalleled effort of opening your mind to humor and rhymes, thinking and thinking, then be my guest. Okay. Last thing I am mentioning, I value your time and my own to be honest, so I'm not going nuts with information. On screen will be a lot of details that I won't be vocally elaborating over as I speed through each entry at the speed of Seer, which is roughly 15% too fast and I would benefit my health and your ears slash brain by going a tad slower, but what can you do? Number 379, Howl Tusk. This item is the only one that is actively detrimental to use. The knockback and chance to make monsters flee is abysmal, coupled with poor stats in all points of the game. Number 378, Pompey's Wrath. This item has mediocre damage and it has knockback. It makes a volcano very rarely, which is great, allowing you to throw this shit weapon into it. Number 377, Shadow Killer. If used properly, Shadow Killer is a mediocre weapon that actively ruins one of the greatest abilities the assassin has by freezing and destroying potential death sentry targets. No bodies equals no bombs. Number 376, Griswold's Edge. Lower damage than my balls and has cockback. Bad, an insult to Griswold's large balls. Number 375, Earth Shaker. I know I hate knockback a lot, but it's so shit. Since the weapon is so weak, you'll be following things around to bonk them, not to mention the very odd plus three to elemental druid skills, which I don't see as a positive attribute, honestly. Number 374, Steel Goad. Steel Goad is a real toad, scares fucks and scares me with how weak it is. Number 373, the Dragon Chang. This item has stats suitable for ant-like beings fighting other ant-like beings. Number 372, Demox Hue. This item has stats suitable for ass-like beings fighting other ass-like beings. It also takes away 8-hole defense. Number 371, Steel Shade. If I had to throw shade at Steel Shade, I would say that it ought to remain in the shade as it's a real shade of ass cheek. Number 370, Fell Oak. Fell Oak fell out of the ass of the game designers as they looked for a way to include another low damage weapon with knockback. Number 369, Axe of Fekmar. More like Axe of Fek All Matter. Number 368, Wither String. When the wiki says that the item is generally weak due to its low damage and very minor damage bonus, what more could I add? Number 367, The Face of Horror. I rank things like Chance to Flee as negatives since it doesn't help you accomplish your task of killing monsters, plus it offers fairly pathetic benefits otherwise. Number 366, Pluck Eye. I'll take bows that are weak and shit with no real purpose for 500. Number 365, Gleam Scythe. I'll take one-handed swords that are weak and shit with no real purpose for 500. Number 364, Black Tongue. Two-handed weapons need to have incredibly big stats to be really good. While having Prevent Monster Heal is good, Black Tongue really is a bastard sword. 
Number 363, Hellmouth. 2% chance to cast level four Meteor on Strike is about the same percent chance I would have to ever want to equip Hellmouth to a character. Number 362, Ginther's Rift. This item must be referring to Ginther's Rift in his ass. Number 361, Stout Nail. Stout Nail has no power to keep up with other uniques and therefore it should be disregarded immediately. Number 360, Lance of Yagai. This item has not enough power to be relevant and is a Diablo 2 Spear, so that should help indicate how good it is. Number 359, Kina Mills Owl. This item gives a whopping plus six to Holy Fire, and I gave it a big thumbs down for the same reason. Items built around one class's niche use is generally poor. Number 358, Snake Cord. I rank Snake Cord as Snake in Pants tier, as it has one use against the very first act boss and is never relevant again. Number 357, the Torch of Iroh, moderately good necromancer item if you can find this, but I'm angered by its boast of 6% life stolen per hit. Number 356, Moonfall. Moonfall looks good unless you actually try to utilize it as a weapon. Then you realize fire damage sucks ass and isn't a good selling point. Number 355, Dark Glow. Item gives max resistance in early ass normal with bad defensive stats, meaning that you'll never utilize this weapon in any fashion. Number 354, Grim's Burning Dead. By the time this fucking necromancer scythe can be equipped, the plus skills won't matter, and at no point should the necro be slapping people with a big scythe anyway. Number 353, The Patriarch. This sword is a sword, of course, but it has a host of boring modifiers, which did not help its ranking at all. Number 352, The Tanner Gorod. A not altogether bad item, but without enough oomph in any stat to give it a better ranking. Number 351, Steel Driver. Potentially upgradable thanks to its high enhanced damage modifier, but not upgradable due to its lack of any other stat. Number 350, Iron Stone. I have no words for boring ass hammers except boring and ass. Number 349, Goal. Goal fuck yourself if you want anything beyond a nice boon to your magic find. Number 348, Icker String, a weak crossbow suited to normal act one. What more can I say? Number 347, Rake Scar, a weak axe suited to normal act one and two. What more can I say? Number 346, Blade Bone. I'll use Blade Bone's entry to mention that we're going to have a lot of mediocre items to cover from now on, as they're not completely useless. Number 345, Lenimo. This item has moderate benefits, but so few of them that you'll be itching to replace this as soon as possible. Number 344, Rattle Cage. Oh boy, is that crushing blow and knockback making this item good for bosses, but shit otherwise? I think so. Number 343, Coif of Glory. I would rather fall asleep instead of looking at Coif of Glory anymore. Number 342, Sparkling Mail. Mail me some more fucking stats next time, please, as 30% lightning resistance as the selling point will not do. Number 341, Ice Blink. This is the Frost version of Sparkling Mail, so refer to my previous F-word usage. Number 340, Bing Zi Wong. This item is a real Wong. Just kidding, it's okay, but okay equals uh, number 340. Number 339, Storm Rider. Another axe with traits that would be good if the game was made differently, but since the game is made the way the game is made, this weapon sucks eggs. Number 338, Black Leech Blade. Wiki uses the word meager when discussing this item. I agree. Number 337, Skin of the Flayed One. More like Skin of the Foreskin. <laughs> Me right good, you like and subscribe. Number 336, Storm Strike. Early game relevant bow, loses it out on damage pretty quick. Number 335, Gold Wrap. Amazing for its magic find usage, but has nothing else going for it. Number 334, Blink Bat's Form. Fantastic for all of 35 minutes if you can find this extremely rare item in the first 35 minutes of playing. Number 333, Dusk Deep. It's fine, I guess. It has stats after all. If you want more than just stats after all, well, keep looking. Number 332, Cloud Crack. Ass Crack has enough stuff on it to be used over some other options, but this item comes at a time when you can get much better stuff. Number 331, Plague Bearer. Main strength being poison damage means the main strength is nothing important at all. Number 330, Soul Feast Tyne. Good leech weapon, but that's not overly important when you can equip this item. Stats are otherwise too low. Number 329, Storm Spike, another gimmick weapon that needs to have much more going for it besides a little lightning damage. Number 328, Guardian Naga. More poison damage means more me saying balls, big bullshit, and other B words meaning bad. Number 327, Maelstrom. Insanely pointless wand with curse benefits, all of which aren't going to greatly affect your gameplay. Number 326, Ripsaw, another sword with minimal damage and a random upside. This opens wounds. I open my dictionary to insult it. Number 
325, Soul Flay, another sword with minimal damage. Oh boy, I wish there were more swear words to spice these sections up. Number 324, Hell Plague, another sword with minimal damage, this time boasting elemental stuff, including plus two fire skills. That makes it almost a caster viable weapon, but with no other caster mods, this item is not good for anyone. Number 323, Storm Eye, a Paladin Scepter that's good for lightning damage with the largest shrug I can manage. Number 322, the General's Tandulaga Flail. This flail is disliked by everyone the instant you see it drop. It is the epitome of mediocre. Number 321, Ravenclaw, your shitty bow, Ravenclaw. I'm a what? Number 320, Gorefoot, BBB, otherwise known as Bad Blue Boots. Number 319, Worm Skull, Token Poison Dagger, Necro Helm. Not bad, I guess. Number 318, the Gavel of Pain. Fairly mediocre, bonker. The amplified damage charges in proc is nice, but it's a little low on everything to be really good. Number 317, Pus Spitter. The Necromancer crossbow lacks in every detail that would make it good, starting with the fact that it's a Necromancer-based crossbow. Number 316, Tooth Throw. This armor offers a little offense from getting your ass slapped, but a little offense from your chest plate ain't putting this on the top of the list. Number 315, the Skewer of Krintiz, another item that excites no one on Earth, I'm fairly positive. It's fine if you need something for the beginning of the game, otherwise, no thanks. Number 314, Rivux Keen. Fantastic sword for the level, but it's rarer than a good Blizzard game update, so it's down here. Number 313, Serpent Lord. It's a staff with the intent to whack people with. Basically only good on Assassin, but briefly in any event. Number 312, Razor Tyne. Interesting mods, but with next to no power, making it not useful. In the bin you go. Number 311, The Battle Branch. It's fine, no time, let's move on. Number 310, The Diggler. The Diggler is a tiny dagger with mediocre benefits. Bye-bye. Eh, Number 309, Hellcast. Almost every bow and crossbow in this game has the same problem. They're good for a few minutes, but the power falls off way too much to be useful for long. Number 308, Brain Hue. This sucks mana out of the enemies. Uh, brain, I suppose. Another thing that it sucks? I'll let you guess. Number 307, Skull Splitter. More mana stuff on melee weapons. That's not altogether bad, but it doesn't help when the weapon is so weak. Number 306, Death Spade. It's another damn mana-based axe, which means it loses. Good day, sir. Number 305, the Treads of Siphon. These garbage green boots, otherwise known as garbage goots, are garbage goots. But if you got shit all else, they're okay to use. Number 304, Hot Spur. Damn, this fire on my ass is really hot. But wait, I brought my fire-based protection boots today. Great, now I'm not dying to fire. Pointless item. Number 303, Rock Fleece. I would insult it more, but the 10% reduction in damage is pretty amazing. Less so in normal when you can use this, but eh, it's still actually a pretty good mod. Number 302, Metal Grid. This absurdly rare amulet has so little functional use in comparison to other endgame items that it's depressing. But hey, at least you can now use Iron Golem to waste a good item. Number 301, Hustle Doll Evo. This is an actually good item if you need anything to prevent monster heal, which is usually only necessary against like Uber Diablo, but still this has a function, so well done. Number 300, Black Bog's Sharp. Good poison dagger weapon, so yeah, it deserves 300th place. Number 299, Endless Hail. I miss when Strafe wasn't way worse, which means that this item's signature feature isn't good. Number 298, Silk Weave. Uh, shit Weave. Just kidding, man, it is good, I guess. Yeah, sorry, I don't have anything to say. Number 297, Vistertuint. What we call the pointless item because spirit exists sucks to be you and your name's hard to say, fucker. Number 296, Crowcaw, Snore, otherwise known as Boar. It's armor, thanks for coming. Number 295, Iron Pelt, Snore, otherwise known as Boar. It's armor, thanks for coming. Number 294, Shadow Fang, would be good if it did more damage than a Denny's Toothpick. Number 293, Soul Harvest, pathetic damage output with bleeding if you want to waste time waiting for damage over time to do the job. Number 292, Hell Clap, does not clap anything, especially the forces of hell. Number 291, Rogue's Bow. Again, almost every unique bow is too weak to really care about. Sorry to this very excitingly named item. Number 290, Goblin Toe. It's a great item on a budget because of the crushing blow, but that's all this has going for it, unfortunately. Number 289, Storm Guild. He finds shield when you can first use it, but eh, very outclassed overall. Number 288, Venom Ward. If you ever want to completely chat out Andariel, use this. 
That's the entire item. Number 287, Biggin's Bonnet. Rare ass item with weird ass damage enhancing stat. Kind of interesting, kind of bad. Number 286, Templar's Might. I know, let's take the rarest base type unique in the game and give it increased stamina at level 74. I hate how weak this item is. Number 285, Totus Fale Flamma. Let me get my flaming sword that does nothing real quick for a sword that translates to Deathfall Blaze. It's annoyingly unblazy. Number 284, Blood Letter. I love this item, but it's complete crap. It's too weak and Whirlwind does not appreciate having too weak weapons. Number 283, Warlord's Trust. Use Axe on Man. Man survives because Axe doesn't do enough damage in Nightmare difficulty. Number 282, Cold Kill. Someone left this cold axe in the sun for too long because it's not nearly cold enough to do shit to anyone. Number 281, Water Walk. These boots are fine if you need boots that have text on them, otherwise there are better choices. Number 280, Inferno Stride. These boots are fine if you need boots that have text on them, otherwise there are better choices. Number 279, Lava Gout. I hate these gloves. They are unreasonably underwhelming for no reason. Real gout these things are. Number 278, Venom Grip. Venom Grip my balls with these pointless gloves. Again, if you need meager benefits, feel free to take these. Number 276, Seven, Cohen's point. Plus one skills is cool, I guess. Thanks for coming. Number 276, Bane Ash. It's worse than the Leaf Rune Word, and it has physical modifiers, making me mad. Number 275, Blood Thief. Low level wonder with good stuff that gets worse very quickly. Number 274, Lead Crow. Another crossbow that doesn't stand out enough to get higher on the list. Number 273, The Chieftain. More like the Grunt Buck because this thing has small damage. Also more mana on axes. What is the deal with that? Number 272, Gore Shovel. Worst shovel I've ever seen. Can't even dig a hole to put this dog ass item in. Number 271, The Nasher. Pretty fat modifiers to be honest. The low damage is all that really holds this one back and the fact that it has very few lines of text on it. Number 270, Night Smoke. This belt is pretty bad. Bad, but it offers three slots, so that's yeah, something. Number 269, Blade Buckle, four slot belt, so that's good. Otherwise, it's not great, but I usually use this when leveling. Number 268, Sword Back Hold, uninteresting shield going to bed. Number 267, Bone Flesh, uninteresting chest continuing to sleep. Number 266, Twitch Throw, uninteresting chest starting to dream. Number 265, The Centurion. Not interesting chess. Dream turned out to be not so good. Starting to wake up. Number 264. Serakin's chants have woken up. Item has three lines of text, but I'm too tired to give a shit. Moving on. Number 263. Nagel Ring. It's great for magic find. It's horrible for everything else. Use it for magic find. Number 262. Nokuzan Relic. The lowest level unique amulet in the game, and it's pretty bad. Number 261. Glimmer Shred. This thing has no glimmer of hope of being put any higher on the list because it's bad. Number 260. 60, Widowmaker, a bow that doesn't do enough. Boy, am I surprised. Number 259, Nosferatu's Coil, an elite belt, meaning that it should be really interesting. It's more good enough than anything. Number 258, Steel Carapace, lots of defense, poor schmods, decent if you need something. Number 257, Sky Strike, the best bow so far based on raw and probably bad math calculations. Number 256, Ghoulhide, mediocre gloves, has mana leech if you need it. Number 255, Tiamat's Rebuke, a shield. That's the whole definition right there. Number 254, Wiz and Draw, the best bow so far, based on raw and probably bad math calculations. Number 253, Humongous. Humongous Dump was the full title for this axe. Just kidding, it was actually Humongous Disappointment. Number 252, Terror Haunch. Solid enough boots if you need something in that slot. Number 251, Frostburn. These are oddly statted gloves and can be utilized by endgame characters and early game builds somewhat. Okay, it's decent enough. Number 250, Varret Keep. Fire Resistance Shield. What a story, Mark. Number 249, Umbral Disc, another shield that offers benefits. Are they good? I guess, kinda. Number 248, the Eye of Etlick. Almost really cool, but it lacks even a second really pumper of a modifier. Quite the shame. Number 247, Earth Shifter. Good for shifting the earth and not so good for killing stuff. Number 246, Horizon's Tornado. A surprise to be sure, this item seems like it'd score high, but it's simply a little too weak. Number 245, Sure Shrill Frost. Someone took a regular ass mace and put it in the freezer. Number 244, Heart Carver. A dagger with minimal strengths, but good at finding items. So it's a dagger with minimal strengths. Number 200. 
243 grave palm more like face palm i'm just kidding they're gloves you can enjoy if you need them and then if you don't you can skip them number 242 radiman sphere a good shield thanks for listening to the video hope you enjoyed number 241 gurk's sanctuary a good shield thanks for listening to the video hope you enjoyed number 240 lance guard a good shield thanks for listening to the video i hope you enjoyed number 239 atma's whale i'd be wailing too if my name was attached to such a mediocre chest plate number 238 graven spine decent necro wand for skills but spirit dumpsters it rune words have ruined the game all that jazz number 237 the iron jang bong refer to the point about spirit ruining the game for most caster items number 236 the grim reaper this weapon always deals two times damage but it's so weak it doesn't matter at all very disappointing end to the grim reaper number 235 crush flang crushing blow saves this item but the knockback shoves it back to 235th place number 234 blood fist they're fine if you need gloves quite good for hit recovery number 233 palta lunata a shield the bed is that way i will use it if any more decent enough shields come my way number 232 heavenly garb a baby blue chest plate that is fine really puts the fear into the demons dressed like this number 231 the maham oak curio the starter amulet you'll use it if you've got it number 230 gargoyles bite throwing items do not perform well because they lack a lot of oomph this one lacks the mostest Number 229, Demon's Arch. Extremely eh in all ways. Probably usable, but no one probably will. Number 228, Sword Guard. Pretty good sword, just needed a little more to make it great. Number 227, Kelpie Snare. Actually made me yawn reading the stats. Where's the real juicy items at, you know? Number 226, Zacharum's Hand. Bonk, bonk, the monster dies. Bonk, bonk, this thing gets outdated. Number 225, Basil's Vortex. Sure, why not? It's a weapon. I'm leaving. Number 224, Gloom's Trap. Here be mana belt. Give me mana so I may shoot bombs from my hands. Number 223, Storm Chaser. It's a unique scudum. Isn't that a nice word? A scudum? This is a real scudum right here. Number 222, Corpse Mourn. I mourn that the unique ornate plate is not that good. It's so cool looking, right? But acid do blow. Number 221, Ooms Lament. Everyone loves this little skull wand, oh boy. Number 220, Rust Handle. Bonk Bonk, Paladin Scepter, has skills and little else. I feel like this should have been called Rusty Fucking Scepter in all ways, not just a handle. Ball and ball. Number 219, Doom Slinger, a crossbow, so you know the score. Out the door we go. Number 218, The Hand of Brock, BBB or Big Blue Brock, gloves that can lose their luster as soon as you can muster anything better. Number 217, Gold Skin, if you ever want to gold fine, this could be good. Otherwise, not really. Number 216, Hawk Mail, I'm too cold. Oh wait, now I have a bad defensive item that prevents too much cold damage. Wow, good. Next. Number 215, The Rising Sun, Fire centric piece meaning it's not good enough but it's a pretty damn good fire based piece number 214 ghost flame really rare item that didn't deserve to be that rare not worth the effort to find it number 213 soul drainer good gloves dual leech gives it a place just a bit boring when you get down to it number 212 the vile husk big sword goes chop good amplify damage you know number 211 the spire of honor it's a pretty powerful spear it just lacks a real reason why you'd want to continue using it number 210 cuckoo Cuckoo. That's not how you say that. The best bow so far, based on raw and probably bad math calculations. Number 209, Spirit Forge. It's pretty bad, but they gave it sockets, so it's a little bit saved. Enjoy. Number 208, Blood Rise. Pretty strong for when you get it, which considering it's a D2 melee weapon, it's pretty rare. Number 207, the Jade Tando. I hate this item still, but if you don't have anything better, the ability to not be frozen and not care about poison damage is pretty good. Number 206, Blast Bark. The best bow so far, based on raw, probably wrong math calculations number 205 chance guards the best gloves for magic finding the worst gloves for anything else number 204 silks of the victor a really cool item almost legendary in fact it's a fine starter piece but it's out of juice after that number 203 gray form if you have this at level 7 it's massive anywhere else it's minimal number 202 raven lore wow the skill raven my favorite this item is okay regardless of its huge boon to raven number 201 atmos scarab you can read this 12 different ways in different positions and you still won't be sure if you want to use it number 200 flame bellow pretty damn good attempt at a strong fire sword it wasn't enough but hey good effort number 199 frost wind similar to flame bellow they tried a cold sword angle and it's okay it's just not the best number 198 wraith flight 
throwing item, so yeah, I could have benefited from a couple more mods. Number 197, Medusa's Gaze. This shield is trying hard to be good, but it's just not. Number 196, Veil of Steel. Very solid helm for just stuff overall, but not very specific. Good if you somehow need to use this very rare item. Number 195, Death Bit. More stuff you lob at enemies, but similar to other items, this just needs a little more juice. Number 194, Crane to Vomir. Saved purely by reducing the damage you take, otherwise... Number 193, Warp Spear. Warp Spear is a unique gothic staff. Isn't that annoying? It's just, they call it Warp Spear. It's also bad, save for the sorceress levels. Number 192, Razor Tail. Very important belt for Amazon builds and maybe some other stuff, but limited in use overall. Number 191, Black Hades. Saved by having sockets because otherwise this one's pretty shit. Number 190, Blackhorn's Face. It's a helmet with stats, you know? It's not worth criticizing. Number 189, Blood Crescent. Really huge stats for an early game sword. Early is the key word here. Number 188, the Salamander, overshadowed by Leaf, but if you don't have that, you can enjoy this pretty decent staff. Number 187, Spectral Shard, a really good caster one-handed weapon until Spirit puts this one to bed. Number 186, Poison Die. All facets are good, but Poison Die is the worst. Number 185, Fire Die. Fire is a bit above Poison. Number 184, Frost Die. Frost is a little bit above Fire. Number 183, Lightning Die. Lightning facets have the most uses. Number 180. 82, Geed's Fortune, a great charm overall, deserving of 182th on the list. Number 181, the Cat's Eye, good amulet. Damn, the amulets are highly contested as most of them are good. Number 180, Viper Fork. Weird item, it's not all that good. The system put it up here though for having some chunky stats, so enjoy, whatever. Number 179, Crane Beak. Probably better used as a pickaxe than an axe axe, but hey, this item has moderately good stats. Number 178, Rune Master. This item has five sockets. Isn't that interesting? Oh yeah, it's not. <sighs> Number 177, Marrow Walk. We gotta keep running along, which these boots help with. Me clever, me right. Number 176, the Gladiator's Bane. This is a really solid defensive chess piece despite the fact that it looks like a biker jacket or something. Number 175, Arcane's Valor. This item is insanely good in comparison with a lot of items up to this point, but it's just a little too basic to get higher. Number 174, Arm of King Leoric. Weird ass wand in both function and flavor. What, did someone rip King Leoric's dead ass skeleton arm off and make a weapon out of it? And even then, it's kind of a whatever item. Number 173, Ormus's Robes. This item rolls a random sorcerer's spell when it drops. That means it goes from really whatever to pretty however. Sometimes cool, most times not. Number 172, Demon Machine. This is a crossbow, all right. Number 171, Mage Wrath. This is a unique rune bow requiring level 43, all right. Number 170, Isle Strike. This axe is weird, but it has crushing blow on it, so maybe it's good. Number 169, Butcher's Pupil. This axe has a bunch of cool stuff on it. It's a bit weak, but hey, you could do far worse. Number 168, Nail Striker. The lowest level requirement, Unique Scepter has some serious kick to it. It's insanely rare though, and it's only useful for a couple of axe in normal. Number 167, Woe Staff. Good for the Desert Mercenary, but it gets outclassed by many other things. Whoa there. Number 166, the ward. Really amazing normal shield. If you have to use a big wall to defend your feeble body, then this one's pretty good. Number 165, Steel Clash. For paladins, this is like half a spirit, so that's pretty cool. Number 164, Dragon Scale. For paladins, this item sucks, which sucks because only paladins can use it, and its mods could be better applied to another class. Number 163, Nord's Tenderizer. Who the fuck is Nord? I want to see the lore on him, and also his recipe for a killer steak, seeing as his tenderizer is pretty good. Number 162, Hell Slayer. The edgiest name so far. Hell Slayer is good if you want to slay hell. Number 161, the Fetid Sprinkler. The Fetid Sprinkler is a holy water sprinkler, which should be used to cleanse the fetid beasts of the world, I suppose, but you just hit things in the head with it. Number 160, Rip Hook. The best bow so far, based on raw, probably wrong math calculations. Number 159, the Minotaur. This axe is humongous in the way that the humongous axe have been, you can run some ass with this crushing blow chance. Too bad it's too slow. Number 158, Snow Clash, the Blizzard Belt. Pretty good for one build and basically no other. Number 157, Wolf Howl. This barb helmet is something. I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's definitely able to make you a wolf. Number 156, Fire Lizard's Talons, a rather mediocre weapon for the assassin. I bore of looking at it. Number 155, Poison Level Up. The facets are here once again, level up being the better mechanic. 
Number 154, fire level up. Anyways, I feel the need. Number 153, lightning level up. To get through these, number 152, frost level up, and on to something better. Number 151, bone shade. If I had to throw some shade at bone shade, I couldn't because it's all right. Number 150, war shrike. This throwing item is actually pretty strong, but it's still a throwing item, sadly. Number 149, doom bringer. If you want to bring the doom, I recommend the doom bringer because it's all right, I guess. Number 100. 148, Blood Moon. It's a sword of reasonable power and it lets you summon blood golems, which suck ass. Cool. Number 147, the Atlantean has plus skills. Isn't altogether the worst ever either. You're paceable. Number 146, Hexfire. Hexfire Sham Shear is a sham if I do say so myself. And what I mean is that the item isn't that good or that bad. Number 145, the Impaler. The Impaler does its job moderately well, giving you a big stick to impale with. Number 144, Gold Strike Arch. The best bow so far based on raw, probably wrong math calculations. Number 143, Cliff Killer, the best bow so far, based on raw, probably wrong math calculations. Fucking bows. Number 142, Shaft Stop. Awesome gear here. It's something that you could genuinely use endgame on a mercenary as it just gives so much damage reduction. Number 141, Dark Sight Helm. Cannot be frozen gives this otherwise bad item a pass as that's a good mod on a helmet. Number 140, Steel Skull. This item has a lot of things on it. That's your description. I cannot be bothered anymore. Number 139, Tarn Helm. Very good early mid-game hat. Anything with skills gets a pass in my book. Number 138, Razor's Edge. This has some serious bite to it. You can cut vegetables as well as ass pretty well with this. Number 137, Sandstorm Trek. These boots are very competitive for the best in the game, so why are they at 137? Well, not only is the math calculation sometimes weird, but boots are pretty boring overall. Number 136, Karen Shard. Praise be a necro wand that is really good. Number 135, Suicide Branch. Another good wand. I need some good wand related jokes. Maybe something to do with its phallic shape or something. Thing. Number 134, the scalper. Take your fancy, decent throwing axe and bink things in the thinker. Number 133, head striker. Take your head striker and shove it up the adversary's ass, or as the name implies, cut their penis with this. Number 132, Athena's Wrath. Druid based crap scythe. How did this score so high? Number 131, the meat scraper. Scraping the bottom of the barrel with this one. Just kidding, I really dig this item in Nightmare. It is pretty strong. Number 130, lidless wall. A good shield that's like a bad spear. So a useless item, but a strong unique. Number 129, Valkyrie Wing. The weird old Amazon specific helmet, but it's like a specific budget Shaco. Number 129, Peasant Crown, which is just the better Tarn Helm. So, uh, number 127, Wall of the Eyeless. Interesting caster item this is, if you want to not run Spirit, which would be a mistake, but you know, you could run this. Number 126, Undead Crown, strong for Summon Mancer gives it some worth. Number 125, Demon Horn's Edge. This Barbarian Helmet is okay, but it's worse than the other Barb-specific items. Number 124, Storm Spire, the rarest pole arm in the game, is not as strong as it should be. Still, it's not bad for whacking things with. Number 123, Demon Limb, really strong stats, but allocated a little haphazardly. So yeah, ABC, one, two, three, if you know what I mean, get the fuck out of the way. Number 122, Eagle Horn. Well, this bow is fairly strong, so hey, that is nice. Have I mentioned that bows aren't good for the most part? Number 121, Mester Schmidt's Reaver. This axe is so big, it's so unreasonably large that it's a whatever kind of endgame axe. It's at least strong though. Number 120, Leviathan. Very defensive body armor is green for some reason. Is there anything else to say? No. Number 119, Hone Sudan. Sockets on a fairly good spear with crushing blow makes this a good item. That's logic right there. Number 118, Witch Wild String. Wait, what the fuck? Wait a second. Oh, wait, no. It's, it, I thought this was worse. It has sockets, I guess. All right, sir, this item, this item can be here. Number 117, Bone Slayer Blade. Blizzard looked at this item and wondered what would happen if they just added random shit to it and it became okay with 200 charges of holy bolt for some reason number 116 crown of thieves very strong helmet get out of my way item we gotta keep going number 115 the grandfather ah oh, the grandfather what a sad relic you are what was once the best sword in the game is now a totally ignored item but if you absolutely need to use something this is okay number 114 gin slayer this sword edges out the grandfather because it's a one-handed sword with sockets
Because I don't need to explain myself to you, you make your own video. But number 113, Gut Siphon. Uniquely drains life, which most crossbows or bows don't do, and as this does what most things don't does, then this gets to be due at this position. Number 112, Hell Rack. I don't want to discuss crossbows anymore. Number 111, Cold Steel Eye. I mean, it's a sword with modifiers. I knew this would be the pitfall of running down hundreds of weapons. I have nothing to say about this. Number 110, Dark Clan Crusher. This is a seeming fence post with the potential to crush the goatmen in the game, apparently. All I know is that this item is decent. Number 109, Spine Ripper. If you've got to open a letter or rip some spines, nothing is better than this number. Number 108, Thunder God's Vigor. A really strong belt for numerous functions. Basically a better Snow Clash battle belt. Number 107, War Traveler. Amazing magic find item. Something you can leave on forever. Finally, some meta shit. Number 106, Guardian Angel. This item actually has some function for mercenaries and paladins. I wouldn't consciously put it this high, but it is what it is. Number 105, Lightsaber. It's a legendary sword, but it's not used for anything. Still, it could be used if you really needed something. Number 104, Wind Hammer. The absolute chunkiest crushing blow into a tornado, into a dead crowd of bastard monsters weapon you can get. Number 103, Shadow Dancer. Top tier boots for the best assassin builds, but that's kind of it. Still, good showing. Number 102, Hand of Blessed Light. Powerful scepter. Again, this is a little too high in my opinion, but my math is infallible. Number 101, Bariza Duke Canyon. This can- uh, this cannon, this crossbow does a lot of damage with cool mods like ice. Get it? Cool. Number 100, Langabrizer. The first time- why the fuck? The first time knockback is so good. The first time- uh? <laughs> Langabrizer. The first time knockback is good so far as it's being on a crossbow is actually great. Not to mention magic find as well. Number 99, String of Ears. The String of Ears is more like a string of very fat ass because you have a lot more meat on your bones with this one. 98, Kay Hagen's Wisdom. I've always had a fondness for this armor, probably because it's quite good. Number 97, Scolder's Ire, an extremely solid magic finding chess piece. Until you get something top tier, this is one of the most popular items to use. Number 96, the Spirit Shroud. Great item in Nightmare and it'll get you by in hell for a bit. Can't be frozen with plus skills is great. Number 95, Blood Raven's Charge. This bow shouldn't be this high, but my formula put it here. It's not bad at all. Actually, it's pretty good. So never mind, actually. I don't know what I'm talking about. Number 94, Stone Raven. Actually, this one shouldn't be here either, I don't think. It's an okay item, but well, actually, eh, it's pretty good now that I look at it, so disregard me. I don't know what I'm talking about. Number 93, Crescent Moon. Okay, now, wait a second. This item is actually bad. Like, it doesn't have a correct allocation of stats, and it should be differently made. Well, well, the math is what it's gonna be. Here it is. Number 92, Lacerator with good damage, good proc, and modifiers which benefit all uses of good damage and good proc. The Lacerator is a good choice of weapon. Number 91, Brandonar's Star. Look at this box of stats. Too bad the item is shit, so why is that at 91st? Because it got a book of text so the bath breaks it down and puts it here. Number 90, Ethereal Edge. This axe has a lot of wall up, a lot of boom, a lot of synonyms for good. It's not used by anyone though. Number 89, Giant Skull. We've got knockback, yeah, but we got Crushing Blow Hat, so that's a big deal. Plus sockets, plus having a big skull for a hat. Things are getting wild. Number 88, Pierre Tombali Kuant. Long stick with blade, good for killing Mephisto. Thanks for watching, I am exhausted. Number 87, Black Oak Shield. This shit eats ice damage for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, as well as snack time. Very cool. Number 86, Headhunter's Glory. I like sockets and this decent shield has a lot of them. It's also a whole bunch of skulls glued together, so that's fucking scary. Number 85, Spirit Ward with the fade proc, the armor value, the block chance. This is one of the best shields in the game. Number 84, Moser's Blessed Circle. What's the deal with the fucking shield avalanche? This is one of the only ones I've used a bunch of times, so it gets my vote for the best of this group of four. Number 83, Skin of the Viper Magi. Skin of the Absolute Chad, more like, with heavy resistance plus skills, and it's blue so that's nice, more intimidation factor. Number 82, Cerberus's Bite. This is a pretty massive hat for the werewolf druid, but it's pretty much never used in comparison with its better item cousin, but we'll get back to that later. Number 81, Halibird's Rain. This is a pretty massive hat for the big boy barb, but it's pretty much never used in comparison with its better item cousin, but we'll get back to that later. Number 80, Carrion Wind. This item isn't that great either, but by the virtue of being a rare unique ring with a bunch of hoopla on it, it's the 80th best one in the game. Number 79, Ariox Needle. This thing is humongous, but not the axe. Instead that it's the Hyperion Sphere, boosting a lot of skills and a huge amount of power. Too bad it's never used. Number 78, Stone Crusher. This legendary mallet is a pretty strong mallet, capable of having the legendary title almost. It has high crushing blow, great raw damage, and is all around fine for crushing stones. Number 77, Wind Force, the bow of legend, the top of the line, best in slot, before Rune Word's weapon to have. It's what one would call a good weapon. A sad truth for the strongest unique bow in the game. Number 76, Death Cleaver. This axe has only five lines of text, but they're all coming to bat. Absolutely decent axe to use on some characters, with some
some skills, sometimes, all around, better than Humongous Axe. Number 75, Verdungo's Hardy Cord. Verdungo must have been a large beast to have been able to use this Hardy Cord to protect his heart and other body parts. Number 74, Spike Thorn. This item has really substantial damage reduction on it, despite little else. The socket helps to add flexibility, and in most cases, this is a good shield if you don't like anything interesting on your shield. Number 73, Tyrael's Might. All right, so I ranked this item as the third worst in the game originally, because it isn't good. By the time you actually find this armor, if you ever do, it's redundant. But the stats themselves don't lie, and it's a decent chest, if not only for the slain monsters rest in peace mod. Number 72, Nightwing's Veil, the end-all frost helmet with frost damage out the wazoo and out the ass as well. Good hat. Number 71, Spell Steel. Anything with teleport charges on it is useful, and Spell Steel having that functionally means that I've actually used it before. While bad to use for much else, eh, teleport's good enough for me. Number 70, Lycander's Aim. Okay, so I personally think Wind Force is better than Lycander's Aim, but the pitfall of this ranking system is that items with more good text will be valued higher. And this item has an avalanche of good text on it, so get bent, Wind Force, I guess. Number 69, Wisp Projector. Wisp Projector is one of those things that you'll use for the occasional build and think this is pretty good. That's actually all I have to say on the matter. They don't say that I have frightful insight for no reason. Number 68, Manal Heal. Okay, I undervalued the shit out of this ring personally because I probably didn't care for having 500 of them, but despite its common drop chance, this ring is very suitable for early game. Number 67, Black Hand Key. Another Kekromancer wand that has good stats, this time just more of them. Number 66, Blade of Alibaba. The budget best magic find sword in the game. It's weak, it doesn't deal damage, it doesn't Matter. Slap this on a dual wielding barbs offhand or a caster main hand, and you can look for items that are actually good. Number 65, Vampire Gaze, one of the best helmets in the game, especially for the mercenaries. Damage reduction, leech, and pretty sizable defense. Number 64, Mage Fist, a low-level unique with endgame potential due to FCR. That's what does get me out of bed in the morning. Number 63, High Lord's Wrath, one of the best melee amulets in the game due to Deadly Strike, a better statistic than regular strike. Number 62, Azure Wrath, Sanctuary Aura is a pretty cool benefit to this sword. Another cool benefit to this sword is the copious amount of cold damage that it grants. Number 61, Steel Pillar. My pillar is steel when looking at Steel Pillar's fat stats. With an insane amount of damage, you can get away with using this item. Number 60, Steel Ren. These are the endgame melee gauntlets option, which can actually quite dramatically increase your power substantially, outrageously, without parallel. Number 59, Drackle's Grasp. These are the endgame melee gauntlets option, which can actually quite dramatically increase your survivability substantially, outrageously, without parallel. Number 58, Gore Rider. More melee gear, but it's also incredibly good. You'll find Gore Rider on the top of most people's armor recommendations as it lets you put your foot in someone's ass. Number 57, Spire of Lazarus. All right, stabs are not good, typically because of the combo of a one-handed sword and shield is better. This is only here because it has a lot of good stats. I'll continue this thought with the next staff that. Number 56, Spirit Keeper, a very powerful pelt, probably possessing potentially the best production of stats out of all the hats for the druid. Number 55, Bardock's Cutthroat. It's a little blade with lots of stats. While not a meta choice, it's a cool little item. Number 54, Kira's Guardian. This helmet gives an enormous protection against elements to the point where it substitutes most other pieces you need. Never really a meta choice, but usually completely fine to use. Number 53, Dwarf Star. Dwarf Star is just one of those rings I constantly have on as it offers a lot of life and defensive stats. Number 52, Rock Stopper. This best metal dome head protects against rocks, but anything heavier than a rock is going to put your ass in a box right away, so instead opt for the Diablo's big fucking fist stopper. That doesn't exist, sadly, so stick with this decent item. Ah, 51, Alma Negra. This Paladin Shield will keep you in good steed with offensive and defensive traits. The lack of resistance sucks but you can make up for it somewhere else. Number 50, Jade Talon. For the assassin who wishes to absolutely cap out their defenses, this is the weapon designed to stab enemies for you. I'm not sure why this gives so much protection, but it's kind of cool. Number 49, Seraph's Hymn. A very niche but incredibly interestingly statted amulet. I'm looking at the clock and wish to hasten, so that's the info you're getting on this one. Number 48, Nature's Peace. Enemies rest in peace, the better variety. Use this if you want things to have nicer naps. Number 47, Ravenfrost. Who doesn't love Ravenfrost? It's the most effective piece of gear to make you immune to being frozen. Always a staple. Number 46, Andal's Wisdom. Didn't deserve to be on this list because they are not used, but they just have so much shit on them. Since we'll have more staffs coming up, I'll keep this joke of one long running sentence. Number 45, The Redeemer. Ridiculously statted item with so much stuff that you'll get dizzy. Plus, damage modifier is insanely good and skills are always appreciated. Number 44, Stormlash. Anything that casts static field when swinging is going to be good, so guess what? Stormlash is good. Number 43, Arachnid Mesh. The best, uh, everyone belt in the game pretty much when only one option gives a skill point, it's kind of a done deal. You'll find people using this just because it's rare and makes them more powerful. Easy as that. Number 42, Razor Switch. Going, because I tell you, these staffs don't deserve their spot on the list. They're not used. They're only okay items. But I think that's the end of it. I'm pretty sure 
Number 41, Duriel's Shell. Amazing defensive item, which makes sense because Duriel is able to take your head and shove it where your head shouldn't go. So when taking his ass apart and making a chest out of it, you too can have way too much defense. Number 40, Dark Force Spawn. The Necromancer's shrunken head has unshrunken stats. So take this item that rarely drops and has moderate benefits that are better found elsewhere and enjoy it. Number 39, Lycander's Flank. It's not my fault. Well, actually it is my fault, but it's not my fault that these Amazon specific items have books worth of text on them. So while this item is not used probably ever, it looks like it should be. Number 38, Bull Kathos Wedding Band. Okay, well, this ring has plus one skills on it, so that's awesome. I must admit, the tank is getting empty, so I have to trundle forward to the next number now. Number 37, the Reaper's Toll. Big Reaper Stick. Amazing item for your Act 2 Mercenary. This item can single-handedly improve a lot of melee characters' chance of killing things. Number 36, Bone Hue. Bone Hue is about the exact same power level, in my opinion, and my mass opinion, as Reaper's Toll. If you want your Act 2 Merc to be able to rend things himself, this is never a bad option. Number 35, Executioner's Justice. Boy, what's this doing here? It has so much absolute destructive power, but it simply lacks speed and, well, usage, as it's a two-handed axe that isn't a rune word. Still, it's good to see it. Number 34, Skull Collector. That there isn't any more staves at the top of the list for no reason. Fucking mass system broke down for these. Okay, while interesting, Skull Collector isn't really good, and it didn't deserve to be this high of a spot. Now, I think we are finally done. Number 33, Flesh Render. Who boy, if you ever need a dense club with a few spikes that is good for hitting the devil's head with, you can do worse than Flesh Render. Number 32, Bone Snap. Bone Snap is a really early game item. Item, but it's so loaded with crushing blow, it's insane. I had more enthusiasm on my script. Upgrade this one in the cube and see how it goes. It's very good. Number 31, Bone Flame. A, br a, b b b a better shrunken head. Bone Flame has a pointless name considering it has nothing to do with fire. At least the bone part is right. Number 30, Annihilus. Oh, this one needs no explanation. Number 29, Mars Kaleidoscope. Well, this one is three lines of text and they're all good, and that's my extent of the explanation. Number 28, Stone of Jordan. The best ring for casters, usually at all times, because damn, I like skills. Number 27, Wizard Spike. This little dagger has incredible defenses and cast speed on it. Dual wielding these is as barbarian is hilariously good as you just cap resistance and get to speed around with teleport. Number 26, Andariel's Visage. Great mercenary item. Everyone likes seeing this one drop, except Andariel. She's fucking pissed we've taken her shtick of being weak to fire and used it for ourselves. Number 25, Humunculus. The best of the shrunken heads. This item gives a lot of stats that make Necromancer more powerful. Thank you, shrunken head. Number 24, Mang Song's Lesson with staves. Never mind, now we have the stupid meme staff that never drops the 24 for no reason. The staff is almost good, except it doesn't have nearly enough to make it better than a sword and shield. Number 23, Flesh Ripper. Okay, this one took me by surprise because I've never seen anyone use it, but this dagger is so strong, I'm fairly certain it'd make a great Uber's weapon. A little surprising, I must say. Number 22, Schaefer's Hammer, the almighty bonker. This hammer never drops, and it's a real shame because it's totally viable to use on melee characters. Everything about it spells out big bonker. Number 21, Chromatic Ire. Wait, 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 what the fuck? Come on, I did not intend this math to think these items were so good. No one uses this. You could probably. It does offer a lot to the player. Moving on. Number 20, Hellfire Torch. This one needs no explanation, and it's totally insane. Number 19, Rib Cracker. This item is such a meme, but I love it. The staff is a melee weapon, and it hits so hard for some reason. It doesn't just crack ribs, it busts ass with how much damage it does. Number 18, Blood Tree Stump. Actually, not the best mace around, so why is this here? What happened with the system? I tried so hard and I got so far, but in the end, I put Blood Tree Stump above Schaefer's Hammer. Number 17, Griffin's Eye. The endgame lightning helmet is so powerful that you can't make a lightning build half competitive damage without it. Good luck finding it though, it's one of those bastard items. Number 16, Heaven's Light. Sockets, crushing blow. Good ass item, moving on. Uh, number 15, Jalal's Mane. The elaboration will cease. There is no need to elaborate about items with good text on them anymore. Number 14, Thunderstroke. The first Amazon specific weapon that is widely used because it's very strong and is a one hander. Awesome item. Next. Number 13, Holocron Crest. The Shaco clocks in at number 13, which is still a good showing. If you use this hat, you never really have to worry about your headshot again if you don't want. Totally well rounded. Number 12, a shoot is temper, another endgame weapon with stats and benefits that are sure to make you smile. Number 11, Death's Web. This wand is so rare, fucking actually so incredibly uncommon that no one really ever gets to use it. Those who do, though, enjoy insane poison damage benefits. So that's the Necromancer, basically. To the top 10, and I'm gonna die. <laughs> Number 10, the Cranium Basher. This mace is huge. That's about all there is to say. It also bashes cranes. Number 9, Ariat's Face, the best barb helm in the game. That is all there is to say. Number eight, Astrian's Iron Ward. Astrian's is very rare and not worth the effort to pursue over Grief, but unlike Grief, it's got that badass factor, so put it in your main hand and feel good that you almost have a weapon that's 50% as good as a Rune Ward. Number seven, Storm Shield, the end-all shield better than the rest for keeping you alive and bashing things with. A well-deserved spot on the list. Number six, Tomb Reaver. 
an absolutely jacked item for the Act 2 Mercenary. If you get this perfectly statted with great socketed items, it might start outperforming you. Number 5, Death's Fathom. Death's Fathom is the best Blizzard Sorceress weapon in the game, which means most people farming shit love this item. As anything competitively better than Spirit, I'm a fan. Number 4, Oculus. The Oculus sucks ass. Number 3, Titan's Revenge. Titan's has great damage, stats, skills, and gets you kills. It's that good at- I'm so done with things to say. Number 2, Herald of Zacharum. This Paladin Shield is like you ripped the tank door off and started defending yourself with it. Huge everything. Number 1, Crown of Ages. Finally the best item in the game, the Crown of Ages Corona, which I completely ignored last time around, but honestly, it's like an atom bomb on your head. That's literally the last of my mental faculties. I don't know what else to equate it to. This helmet has damage reduction, skills, sockets, and is so armored that it's just absolutely amazing. Put on head, stop being dead. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I'm extremely over the script now, but it was fun to do for the first 20 minutes, almost like playing Diablo 2 Resurrected. Just kidding, but kind of not.